How are we doing folks? Welcome back to another film. Well, we're up in Scotland, my favourite place. We're up here for, we've got three days, um, maybe maybe a little bit more, maybe another day, who knows. But uh, yeah, we're up, we're up around Dunkeld actually, so just south of the Cairngorms and we're hoping to get up there and uh, maybe do some red deer photography. That's the idea, we're a little bit early, but there should be a bit of action going on, so that's the plan. So we've got three nights booked on this campsite. Tomorrow night we're going to be up in the hills. That's the plan. Um, so tonight we're going to set up here. We've got the one tigress, the TP tent, the, the rock fortress. So we're going to set that up. We're going to leave it here tomorrow night. We're going to camp up in the hills. Then we're back here Wednesday night. Uh, we'll have a day photographing Thursday and then we'll be heading back, back home, back into uh, back into England, back to Lancashire. So, join me, enjoy the film, get, get sat down and get a brew on, and uh, yeah, let's see what we get. So there we are folks, all set up, we've got the one tigress rock fortress, there's the motor, look at that, what a cracking spot eh, see so I've been distracted for the last half an hour, I've been uh, trying to get some pictures of this dipper, so let's have a look in the tent, let's have a look what we've got set up. So, let's have a look, right, here we go. So like I said, this is the, the One Tigris Rock Fortress. I've not done a full review on this because I got it last year, only managed to use it once. And um, so I wanted to wait till, you know, it's autumn, winter time when these kind of tents really come into their own. So normally I'd use a tent stove. I've got a Winnowell Nomad tent stove and it's brilliant. I can set it up in here. It probably doesn't warrant it this time of year, but I was going to use it for cooking. Um, it's a little wood-fired stove with a chimney that comes out through the side of the, the tent. But unfortunately on this site, they won't allow wood burning, which is a real pity. So we've got a gas set up, so we've had to, we've had to go with plan B. So this is the, uh, the tent set up. Fantastic tent, loads of room in it. Um, I've got my, got my big camp bed set up. No point roughing it on the floor. You know, I've got the room in the car to bring the gear, so I've got my, my big camp bed set up. I've got a, an under quilt and I've got my big four season bag, so we're going to be plenty warm enough. It's pretty mild at the moment, so it's not so bad. There's my little cooking set up, so my little trager pan chair. There's my food box, got all my, uh, all my dried meals in there, another couple of stoves, pots and pans, all that kind of stuff. There's my little gas cooker. So we've got got a, got a gas double gas burner. There we go. This is uh, seen a bit of action in its time, but it's still going. And we've got a grill as well. So a couple of little steel tables. I've got my paraffin lamp for later on. Uh, fresh water. There's my gas. And I've also brought I brought my little cool box. Well, big cool box with all my grubbing and. Uh, couple of cheeky beers so that's working off me my, uh, my power bank I've got the I've got my eco flow power bank I've also brought the jackery as well for charging batteries and that and all my clothes and my rucksack there so that's the setup yeah it should be uh, it should be fine I so say we're only here for for three nights we're actually on this site for two nights tomorrow night we're going to be wild camping 
up in the mountains somewhere and hopefully finding them red deer. So this is tonight's setup and get some scram on now and look forward to the morning. Plan B, bigger safety matches. Yes. Morning folks, well we just had a very pleasant evening in the tent, should have got up a bit earlier but a uh, fair old drive up here yesterday so had a bit of a lie in. So we're heading up to uh, a walk, just going to have a look around for a few hours and then we're meeting up with Espen Helland, so I've no doubt you all know who Espen is. Fantastic photographer based up in the Highlands and we're going to have a bit of a mooch out tomorrow see if we can find them red deer so that'll be good to meet Espen I say this morning we've just got a few hours we're going to have a walk around one of the local locks see what's knocking about I've already seen a few uh, few nice things I'd, I got distracted yesterday setting the tent up there was a dipper on the river so we managed a few shots, nothing uh, nothing brilliant, but just nice to see. Walking into the village last night and there were a flock of long-tailed tits, which was nice. Obviously no camera with me, but uh, yeah, it's a good start. bit of a wander around the lock of the laws around one of the footpaths and I've, I've actually crossed over the road and just having a mooch up through the woodlands I thought I'd, I'd try and head somewhere a little bit higher because apparently there's quite a healthy um, herd of fallow deer around here and there's also red squirrels now I've just got to this junction that's the main the main path there and I've just got to this little almost like a sidetrack going up into the into the woods and I've just seen two red squirrels up in the silver birch trees. They're absolutely fantastic. The noise they were making was unbelievable, chasing each other around. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to head up, up this little ride, if you will, and see if we can, well, see if we can follow them, really. They've, they've kind of headed up that way. They didn't really clock me. So, and I've, a bit of a technique that, that I've kind of learned when you when you're faced with a, a complete mass of trees like that, it can be 
it can be difficult trying to trying to spot such a small thing as a red squirrel so it might sound a bit mental but <laughs> if you just if you stand there completely still and try and take in the whole vista and just stir into space you know like when strictly come dancing comes on or i'm a celebrity you know just uh, just stir into the abyss and just try and take in the whole vista and then the slightest movement your eye tends to pick up on it so rather than scanning around just pick one point and then if something does move around in the trees your eye will, will automatically go to that movement and it does work like i said it does sound a little bit mental but but just give it a try so we're gonna we're gonna have a, a wander up here um see if we can get anything but uh, yeah hopefully hopefully the, the little squirrels will show the faces Just found a sign that the deer are knocking about so you can see there in the ground that depression it's not warm but sometimes they are but you can always tell if you look really closely and you'll find see the deer here so that's where one of the deer has they say it's just bedded down for the night found himself a nice little little hollow depression under these fantastic silver birch trees and that's a snooze and I've actually found these where they've been they've been warm you can feel the heat off the body fantastic Oh, I've just had the best experience, fantastic. So I was adopting that principle that I was talking about where I was just moving up this, this woodland ride, stopping every, every five minutes and you've got to be patient, just stand there and watch and wait. And I must have, I don't know, maybe about four, four times, you know, stop and wait, move another 100 meters, 150 meters. And on the, the last time, so I think that was like the fifth time, I was just about to move on and I saw this bit of movement and it was a red squirrel just on its own, one on its own. And it must have seen me, it must have seen me, but it wasn't scared. And there's no feeders around, it's, it's completely, I mean, it's completely wild around here. It's just, I mean, look at that, look at the view down there absolutely amazing well, i got a i got a couple of really nice still images one of the best one with a it's got these beautiful catch lights in its eye so i was made up with that absolutely brilliant but you've got to be patient you know don't rush it just stand there and wait and you know invariably the wildlife on many occasions it'll come to you so i'm chuffed to bits with that so we're gonna gonna head back down now we're gonna go down into the visitor center have a look around there, have a have a chat with a few people maybe and uh, have a look at, they have a, an osprey um, hide and they've, uh, obviously the ospreys have, have gone now but um, yeah, 
yeah what a fantastic area though brilliant but i'm dead chuffed with that good start again hopefully hopefully there might be some reds to come so we'll see Morning folks, day, well day three properly, I'm out on the hills with Espen, there's Espen, so as promised, we're on the lookout for red deer, I hope you can hear me, and they're roaring, they're roaring their heads off, so they're about, we came up last night, did a bit of a recce mission, had about three hours up on the hill, saw quite a few stags, so we've got up early this morning we were up up at dark we're just working our way up through the woods just seeing a badger which was fantastic never even clocked us so we hopefully we got a little bit of footage some stills he was just snuffling about in the undergrowth brilliant to see so we're gonna head off now get up to the tree top of the tree line and follow them roars and see if we can get some pictures for you see you in a bit
How are we folks? Welcome back to the, the tent. Uh, what a morning we had. What an absolute morning. We had a horrific, well I had a horrific night because I was sleeping in the car. It, was, uh, it wasn't the best but it had to be done so we were up really early in the morning. Um, I've just been looking through my footage and um, I did a bit of a commentary after we'd seen the stag and the hinds and we got them the fantastic pictures and for some reason it wasn't recording so oh nightmare and i was saying to espen i said how close do you think we got and his, his answer was too close and it was it was unbelievable um this <coughs> you know we spotted this stag crawled up we were up, fully cammed up and got to the the prow on this on this hill and there was there were three or four hinds there and this magnificent stag this red deer stag Anyway, he went up up the side of the hill and then he started edging towards us. It was, oh, it was unbelievable. And he got, we reckon, between 12 and 15 metres away from us. And he was just, he was, just kept eyeballing us. And I th it was getting a little bit to the point where we're thinking, oh, we're going to have to back off here. But luckily, we managed to get the shots. We got some lovely footage, uh, got some great stills as well. Must have got a whiff of us. Anyway, he hightailed it, and he didn't go too far. But he, you know, he stood on the um, on the skyline and started roaring again. Got some great images again. So it was absolutely fantastic. It was a brilliant morning. So I'm currently um, I'm currently burning my sausages while I'm uh, while I'm filming this. But tomorrow I'm going to meet up with Espen again in the morning. We're hopefully going to try and get some fallow deer. There's a big herd of fallow deer around where where he lives and maybe red squirrels again so we've had red squirrels red deer and uh, hopefully we can top it off with some fallow deer so it's up to now the trip's been fantastic it's really lived up to expectations i hope the smoke isn't getting <laughs> obscuring me too much but uh, yeah we're going to get these uh, get these sausages down the neck now and we'll see you in the morning all right